Hello everybody, welcome back to Foxes Abroad. So, uh, you can tell by the title of the video, we're halfway through the, the engine swap on the old coupe here. And uh, let me bring you in and I'll show you some of the finer details of what's going on, because it's a, the garage is a chaos right now. So here you can see, uh, I am rapidly, rapidly pretty much out of room at the moment, except for the place I'm standing. So uh, yeah, a little 302, got it stripped down, took a, a little bit of an autopsy of kind of what was going on, why it was using some oil. And uh, yeah, I'll bring you in, show you what's up with that. Yeah, I mean, got the engine apart, nothing blatantly, blatantly obvious. Um, one thing, you know, if you guys haven't followed along in the past, uh, this engine came out because it was down on compression in number seven and it was using oil all throughout the engine and uh, you can kind of see every single cylinder was the same. And I'm kind of at odds to wonder if it was from the PCV system doing it because or just straight blow by through the intake or I just wonder if the rings just never really seated and it was just had a little bit of blow by. So every cylinder is pretty much the same the bores, you can see some of the crosshatch pattern in there. All I did when I refreshed this motor, you know, it was a really nice condition engine, cleaned it all up, new rings and bearings and everything like that. But uh, went in it with a, a 400 grit dingle ball hone just to give it, you know, break the glaze. And I have a, a total seal ring pack in here. Molly top ring, a, a gapless second. And these are the stock pistons. But I just wonder if the pistons are just a little bit too far worn. Yeah, who knows what their life was before? I know it wasn't like, it was only like 80 some thousand miles. That's nothing really to shake a stick at, but you know, it's not like a zero mile build anyway. So I think I was just pushing my luck when it came to this engine, you know, with the old turbo setup and uh, really cranking up the power. So what I, what happened in the past at the track is I melted some plugs and uh, it was number eight. And you can see evidence of the debris. You know, as the plug came apart, you know, peckered up the, the top of the piston a little bit. But then I did a compression check and number seven was the only one that was low. I was getting 170 PSI, 170 PSI, 120 PSI, then 170 PSI, almost like these three were pretty much dead even within five pounds of each other. And this one was 120, so. At the top of the bore, I don't know, or the top of the piston, let me see if I give it light here. I'll probably have to give you a still image, but the top of the piston right here is rounded over and it's almost like it's eroded. So, uh, like the, the metal has been like burned away, I don't know, from a lean condition, most likely. And uh, what I also noted was over on the head, this is number seven. Right at the top here, there's a little sliver of, I thought it was first carbon at first. I broke this one off with my fingernail, but this is embedded. And I think this is the vaporized aluminum right at the top of the bore where that erosion of the piston was. I think it's just, the aluminum was, I can't even pick that off. It was, yeah, that's solid on there. But uh, aluminum was coming away, there it goes from the piston and depositing itself right here on the top of the head. So, I mean, it's, it's below the deck. So, I don't know. Uh, in factory forged pistons, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I could almost see quite a bit around this one. So, bring this one to the top. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't just know if these these pistons. I really never measured them before I reused them. They were fine in a naturally aspirated application, but uh, yeah, maybe they just do had a little bit too much clearance in them for a turbo setup. You can see this isn't from piston the valves hitting what I the these heads are the 202 intake valve Edelbrock performers. So I had to relieve the eyebrows a bit. So to make sure that there was no piston valve clearance issues. 
So you can see like there's a little metallic shadow on all these, but it's not, there's, you know, it's just from me grinding it, machining it just for the 202 valves. Cause this is, this is just an E303 camshaft in this. It's small. You never get half piston the valve clearance, but uh, that was just because it was larger valves than normal. <clears throat> but other than that, nothing really to note. Uh, you know, cleaning up the intake, you know, cleaning up stuff. These heads are just gonna go in a box for a future project. I got something lined up in the States when I finally get back there, I'm gonna use it. Clutch look great, it's an RS RST McLeod. The aluminum flywheel is gonna go bye-bye because I have a Ford Racing billet steel flywheel I'm gonna put in here because at the track, I have a hard time launching this car. I mean, I know that the 363 is gonna have a lot more torque off the start than the 302 did, but doing some research and things like that, aluminum flywheels really aren't the best for the track. You have to rev it up and the RPMs drop too much before you launch. And I, this is gonna be my big experiment of a, uh, of a billet steel flywheel and how different the car is gonna launch. I mean, it's. Not really an apples to apples, but I think I'll note the difference in how the car drives and launches at the track. Cause uh, I have my other 85 GT in the States has a billet steel flywheel and you know, I'm, I'm low, like 1.42, 60 foots at the track. So uh, I got no issues with that car, uh, but that's a 408 Windsor. Yeah, you know, this is a 363, but I'm pretty sure I can duplicate the efforts if I uh, duplicate the parts flow. And I have an RXT clutch on the my 85 in the States of so the RST. They say you shouldn't use the RSTs on the track, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna get away with it for a while until we can't. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> what else to note? Yeah, so this is the driver's side of the header. And so you guys know <laughs> I don't use any header gaskets. And this is just high temp uh, red RTV. And if you can see, there's on this one and on this head, it was almost zero exhaust leaks with a turbo setup and all that back pressure. So we did have a little bit on the driver's side one. And, uh, you know, I'll just have to reattack that. I'm just going to do the same thing, but I didn't know there was any exhaust leaks until, you know, we pulled it apart and we just saw the carbon trails. So we're going to put it back together the same way. I don't, I didn't use the ultra red RTV, which is one thing I used red RTV gasket maker, high temp, and I'm going to use ultra red this time. And, uh, maybe that'll make a difference, but, uh, it was successful. I'm not going to really change the tactics. I'm going to just, uh, use this stuff instead, but we're going to give that a go when we put this all back together with the headers back on the car. Yeah, it's not easy. I've getting the transmission out you know, on the floor, no lift or anything like that. You know, you can see the TKX is over here. Still all nice. Bell housing's a bit dirty from the clutch area, but I decided to try it this way, leave that stuff in the car. It's a little difficult to get the bolts out of the head and I don't know how it's gonna be when we're gonna try to get the bolts back in to the new heads. But uh, I think that's gonna be the most difficult challenge uh, I'm gonna face putting the engine back in. But yeah, it's just parts and pieces, old water pump. You can see the, the new engine here is coming together. I already took the intake, cleaned it all up, gave it another lick of, of paint real quick. And the water pump's on, everything's painted looking nice, transferring over the oil. Uh, oil pressure sender for the Terminator, oil pressure sender for the car. This is the oil feed for the turbo. I still have my oil cooler to fit. Waiting on valve cover gaskets because Anderson Motorsport says don't use those metal ones with the, the blue, like the Felpro. They have the ones that they want me to use, so which is odd because they they even say, you know, these are the fabricated aluminum valve covers and when you weld them the things do warp and change so they want you to have thicker gaskets i guess so it seals but i mean you can see it does rock a bit i can hear it 
mean, I don't know why they just couldn't run it over a belt sander and true that up before they sold it to you. It kind of doesn't make any sense that they sell it to you like this. Use our thick gaskets because they may leak. So, I mean, I'm not a sponsor of Anderson Motorsports, but uh, I thought <laughs> whoever makes their the valve covers for them, just run them over, true them up before you ship them out. Then people could use regular gaskets. I don't understand that. So, uh, one thing that was kind of odd and scary, I went to take the front and ciliaries off and all these bolts were just like eh, loose, 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 because I had these brackets all powder coated and over time, I don't know if you can see the powder coating kind of squished out in between the brackets. So it just kind of took the clamping load away and <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's, it's good that I took it apart and we found that or else, you know, all this stuff would be, you know, getting loose and could, you know, bolts could fall out, could cause an issue down the road. So one good thing, I guess, about taking it out, I found that. So, uh, yeah, this is just kind of a big update, guys. Nothing really spectacular because, I mean, an engine swap isn't amazing. It's not entertaining. So it's not really worth filming it. So, but just getting pieces, parts off, cleaning them, putting things back together. We're waiting on gaskets. We're waiting on AN fittings for the breather. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go from here. And I have adapters to go to that breather can. And some hose. I have a uh, Halifax sensor so I can use the crank trigger. May not, I'm probably not going to use it initially to start with, but it's something that I want to switch over to for more accurate timing. You know, it's just, <sighs> it's just a lot of work to do. So, uh, yeah. So it's dinner time, guys. I'm going to get something to eat, keep cleaning parts, putting things back together. And, uh, yeah, just a little update. Thanks for sticking around. And I'll catch you guys again soon, and I'll keep you updated.